Hi, welcome back to Two Sounds One Pack. Finally, we finished 500 kilometers each of riding, and now we bring to you our more in-depth review of what we thought about this wheel. Let's start from the very beginning. The Patton, made by Liebherkim, is a 126 volt wheel with a 2200 watt hour battery. It has 24 MOSFETs. It weighs about 88 pounds. The tire diameter is 17 and a half inches. The free spin speed is 100, over 100 on the high speed mode. And the suspension has 80 millimeters of travel. So in order to give you a more in-depth review, we actually have two different patterns. One is a pre-production one, one is a production first batch. Now some of you guys may be very curious as to what the differences between the bat first batch and the pre-production units are. The smaller differences are that the suspension now has the writing of the weight on the top visible. Another change was the toe pads. This is the batch one and this is the pre-production. The batch one is about half a centimeter thicker. So you can see the difference here. It's also a different rubber. Uh, this one has a texture to it and is much grippier as I pull my finger through. This one slides with ease. Now, this difference in depth may not seem like a lot and there's also a difference in profile, but when in actual use, it makes a huge difference because you get rid of that gap that was between your foot and the pad at the lowest setting. Now with this one, or the lowest setting, I can't even stick my foot in properly, so I have to use it one notch up. So this will allow a greater diversity of riders to use the toe pads in its stock form and not have to remove it. Now, unfortunately, there was no change done to the handle height for batch one. This still will cause an issue uh, with putting up the charge port. The difficulty is not so much the handle, but more so the rubber. So if you come up to the top, you can see how that rubber overlaps with the top of the charge port. You really gotta push your way up and get it right to the very inside. Overall, the pattern looks really cute and it looks pretty aggressive too, uh, especially the handlebars and the stock pads. I do like the motor. There is no spokes and it's just uh, in one piece. So for the size, it is a 16 inch wheel. So it's very easy to control, it's not that hard. So the width of this wheel is wider than the S22 and even wider than the EX30. But when you're riding, it's not that bad. The weight of the pattern is around 85 pounds. So it's slightly heavier than the Bugol Master. But when you're riding it, it actually feels lighter than the Master. You will only feel the weight when you are actually lifting it up. So with the pattern, we were lucky enough to get two units. Now one of them was 62 and the other one was a 66 pound suspension. So that is the middle of the, middle of the pack as well as the jump version. Both of us rode both the wheels and therefore we came up with a very good conclusion as to how we feel about the differences between these two. Would you like to talk about it? So I rode both the 62 and 66 as mentioned. So with the 62, I rode down a large set of stairs and it actually bottomed out. And I actually weighed 95 pounds, um, maybe with gear on, maybe just over 100. But I was surprised that I was able to bottom on the 62 pounds. So I also gave a try on the 66. Uh, I went trails with it and it didn't feel stiff. I was able to compress it and I was enjoying my ride with the 66. So if I have to choose between the 62 and the 66, I will go for the 66. Now some of you might say, you can increase the compression dampening in order to prevent bottoming out, which is true. That is a band-aid solution to the spring weight. I believe that the spring weight should be properly matched and then the rebound and compression should be tweaked in order to get a really good feel. And if you're a heavier rider, there's a higher chance of you bottoming out very easily. With the screen on the Patton, it is very similar to the Sherman S. I'd be surprised if it wasn't exactly the same. The buttons, the brightness, the layouts are all very similar. Now, one thing that I really did enjoy is the fact that you can quickly adjust the settings on the screen. Leaper Kim has put on berm mode, which allows you to change the cutout angle and you're able to see at what degrees it allows you to do. The only thing that I didn't like about it is the button is too skinny. So when we are riding, especially with our gloves on, it's so hard to find the button and actually press onto it. The headlight is the same as all Leaper Kim wheels. It is bright in the center and blinding on the outside, which means everyone that's coming on the opposite direction will not appreciate you. So with the tail light, it looks really cute with the two little circles. It did its job, it's really bright from the back 
And one of the things I was very scared about was the trolley handle. Seeing it in the pictures being at the back of the wheel gave me a lot of Goad RS PTSD. However, I'm very glad to report that the trolley handle is pretty good. Whether it's because the handle is very sturdy or that it's not at the back of the wheel behind the tire, the probability of it tipping and running away from you is not very high at all. Now, if you do tilt it beyond about 20, 30 degrees, there is still the tendency for it to run away on you. So do be careful, but it is nowhere close to what the Bagode RS used to be like. So with the pattern bumper, it is really protecting the wheel. Uh, from Electric Jim's video, we could see how he smashed the wheel into a wall and it still did a job. And I personally crashed on the pattern again on the stairs. And it still looks good. So I do really like the bumper handle, especially when I need to do emergency braking, you can just hold onto it and brake it. And if you drop your wheel or you have to lift your wheel, it is a really good place for you to grab on. So the pre-production unit that we had was provided by EVs. That one had the similar EUC custom power pads, and these ones have the power pads that are designed specifically for the pattern. Now, with the EVs pad, because you have a thick foam, you won't feel the edge of the battery pack. However, with this type of pad setup, you can feel the edge of this battery pack and it can provide some discomfort. So with these stock pads that you can purchase for the wheel, they are designed for the pattern. And so they have these cutouts, which allow you to place the power pad further forward or backwards based on your preference. And the cutout is both on the braking pad as well as the power pad. Now these get rid of the design fact that the wheel is kind of narrow and these bumpers limit your aftermarket pad setup. So when we had the kinetic pads on there, although it looked really nice, the angle of lean was not very much because we couldn't put it past the pads. The toe pads is something that we have never seen before. It is brand new to the market. At first, I did not know whether I would really like it because of the limitations that it provides in terms of the power pads that you can use, the power pad setups. However, I will like to say that I did really enjoy it. The combination of the height adjustability, the securedness with the teeth on the toe pad, the fact that the frame is screwed to the battery shell for a very secure connection means that when you're jumping and being playful with this wheel, it will never miss a beat. You will never hear Velcro rip and it always stays stuck in the right place at the right time. So the only thing we wish for the toe pad is it could be a little bit wider, comes out a little bit more. Well, because the width of this wheel is pretty big, so our natural stand is bigger than usual. So when we stand on it, we might need to turn our toe in in order to have our toe lock in in between the pedal and the toe pad. So with this pedal on the pattern, I don't quite like it personally. I do find it slip a little bit, not as good as the gold spike pedals. When we're doing trails, pedal security, pedal spikes is a huge thing for your safety and for your foot not to slide off. In these type of scenarios, this pedal, although it is pretty good, it is not as good as it can be. Now, in order to improve the pedals, you will need to go aftermarket. However, I have some bad news for you. The pedal mounting system is actually slightly different than the Sherman S. And therefore, if you are getting first batch, you may have to wait for aftermarket suppliers to catch up in designs. Although we're talking poor and ill about it, it is still a very good pedal. When it comes to the kickstand, all you really want is a sturdy kickstand that does not get in the way. And in both those aspects, this kickstand is perfect. At no point when we were doing stairs did it ever knock anything or get in the way. Even going down trails and drops, it was fine. And whenever you did need it to put it down the kickstand, it was sturdy. So A plus for me. Over the last 500 kilometers, we did a lot of different styles of riding. We tried to push this wheel in different ways so we can get a really good diverse look at what this wheel has to offer to the common rider. One of the first things that we did was ride it down huge sets of stairs. Whether they're steep or few or many, we did it all. What did you think? Over five, it is so easy to bottom up because the suspension is so soft. 
On the flip side though, because the suspension is soft and because the wheels lots of torque, going upstairs was quite the breeze. It went up without beeping, without complaining. Now, when it comes to seated riding, I found the top surface, its width is perfect. Of course, it'd be better if there's a cushion, but the width was just right. However, I found that the length between the front and the back of the wheel to be a little bit narrow, which doesn't allow me to find the exact position that I would like as a rider. So with me on the smaller size, I still do fall in between the gap in between the back handle and the trolley handle. The good news, however, is that because you have the two grab handles on the very corners of the unit and they're the same diameter, it'll be very easy for an aftermarket party to retrofit an old Sherman or Sherman Max seat onto the pattern. On the trails, this pattern was the most playful wheel I've ever ridden. It pushes you as a rider to take on more risk, to do things that you maybe never thought of doing before. Little hops, jumps, roots, stairs, it will keep up with you. It's just now whether or not you are willing to do it. However, do be careful because if you start to do more and more, the tendency of bottoming out comes back and rears its ugly head. So that is something to keep in mind. By no means am I a professional rider. However, I was able to get this wheel to go from zero to 70 kilometers in six seconds and go from 70 to zero in six seconds. And to me, especially as a bigger rider, the confidence that it provides for me to lean that hard and for the wheel to keep up was truly amazing. Now, some of you guys might be asking, well, what's the top speed? I weighed 240 pounds and going on the road at 100% battery, I was able to get first beeps around 72 to 75 kilometers per hour. Now, if you want to ride into the beeps, Leaper Kim does have different beeping rhythms as you get closer to 100%. When it comes to braking, the fact that the grab handle is in the perfect position, it is very ergonomic for you to throw your hand, grab it and pull back. I was able to break the pattern confidently and very hard harder than any other wheel that I've tried before. By the seat of my pants, I believe that the Patton is the torquiest wheel currently in production. The most popular question that people would ask is, how far this thing will go? What's its range? We did a small range test on it. No, we did not ride it to tilt back. Uh, we, go, we did 70 kilometers round trip. The reason why we did not do it to tilt back is because I weigh 240 pounds, Christine weighs 100 pounds. So if you put her on any wheel, she's going to do more range than I could ever do. However, this is very good for you because now you can linearly extrapolate your range based on your weight. For the wheel that I was riding, I did 70 kilometers and I used 80% of the battery. For Christine's wheel, she used 50% of the battery for 70 kilometers. I would probably get about 85 kilometers and Christine would get over 100 kilometers. With that 70 kilometer range test, we were only doing it in the city. So we weren't booking it or we weren't pushing this limit. Well, average speed was around 25 kilometer per hour. But if you're riding it aggressively or like if you're pushing it using the torque, then you might need to readjust and those numbers a little bit. Someone asked me, if you have to choose a wheel to go to the trail, would you pick the S22 or the pattern? I'll go with the pattern. However, if I know I'm going to do jumps or do a large style of stairs, I'm not going to do it with a pattern because I don't trust the suspension. But overall, I love this wheel. It is a very playful wheel and it's very nimble. If I have to rate it, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I have to say that the pattern was one of the most fun and exhilarating wheels that I've ever had to ride and review. With that being said, it does have a couple drawbacks. An overarching theme is the suspension is just too soft. On a normal day, if I'm doing a short ride, my hands normally gravitate towards the pattern because of how playful it is, because of the performance it provides, and its overall ride characteristics. But if you are doing larger drops, I would shy away from it. My wheel score, compared to all the other wheels that came 
before it would be also an 8 out of 10. Okay, so that marks the end of our video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And you may also turn on the ding 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 dong to receive notification of our latest content. We'll see you in the next video. Bye!